This is on mathfields.com where you can find more links to uh, math YouTube videos and computer science. And let's take a look at linear equations and two variables. In our first problem here, we're going to graph this by plotting points. Normally I hate plotting points, so we'll show you a whole lot of these. Now first thing I'm going to do is solve for y. Um, remember our steps for uh, solving for y. This is a formula type problem um, where you got two two variables. Um, first step is get rid of parentheses, don't have any. Second step is get rid of fractions. So I'll multiply everything by the LCM of all our denominators. We only have one denominator, so that is our LCM. So we'll multiply everything by 3. These threes cancel. And 3 times 3x gives us 9x minus 5y equals 6. Now we want to get everything with a y on one side, everything else on the other side. So I'll take negative 5y to the right side and a 6 to the left side. So we got 9x minus 6 is equal to a positive 5y. <coughs> Now I'm um, trying to get y by itself, so I'm going to divide everything by 5. So I got 9 fifths x minus 6 fifths is equal to 5, 5y over 5. And those y fives cancel. And we'd end up with y is equal to 9 fifths x minus 6 fifths. Um, now I put this in this form for a specific reason. Um, plotting points, you could actually left it in this this form, but I want to show this in a couple different ways. So I want to compare the two. Plotting points, you pick x values. Um, so maybe I'll pick on I don't know negative one, zero, and one. You want to pick three different ones. It doesn't matter what you pick, but you want to keep them fairly small. Don't pick fifty thousand. Now that we got in this form. It's very concise. We um, can do the calculation right within our problem here. That's why I like this form. So we've got 9 fifths times negative 1 minus 6 fifths. That gives us negative 9 fifths minus 6 fifths, which gives us negative 15 fifths, which gives us negative 3. So our first point is negative 1, negative 3. right there. Then we put 0 in. So we got 9 fifths times 0 minus 6 fifths. Well 9 fifths times 0 drops away. Negative 6 fifths. That's negative 1 and 1 fifth. It's best to put these in decimal or put them in mixed number form like this. So you can see where in the world we're talking about. 0 and negative 1 and 1 fifth. That's about right there. If you're not sure if you got in the right place, make your dot a little bit bigger. Okay, 1. And we got 9 fifths times 1 minus 6 fifths equals 9 fifths minus 6 fifths, which gives us 3 fifths, which is uh, 0.6, I believe. So we got 1.6, which would be maybe about right there. Okay, now that we got our three points, we'll draw a line through them. And that's our answer. Now, you should always do three points. Uh, two points is actually all you need for a line, but the third one's a check to make sure you did your math right. If they don't form a straight line, then you screwed up on your math somewhere. Well, besides making it uh, real concise for doing your calculations, uh, solving for y... Having in this form is perfect for plugging in your calculator. So let's go ahead and plug this one in. I'm going to press my y equals, press clear. I got 9 fifths, so 9 divided by 5, my x key, minus 6 fifths. And then graph. And that'll give you your, your same answer.
take a look at another another way of graphing. Um, this is finding uh, intercepts. So we've got negative 5x plus 3y equals 15. And it says graph each linear equation by finding its intercepts. Okay, well let's first find our x-intercept. Now to find our x-intercept, we're going to plug 0 in for y and solve. Now intercepts is always the same way. You always plug 0 into the other variable and solve. So if we're trying to find the x-intercepts, we'll plug 0 in for y. So we've got negative 5x plus 3 times 0 equals 15. Well, 3 times 0 drops away. And we'll go ahead and divide both sides by negative 5. And we get x is equal to negative 3. Now, if you want to write that in point form, that would be negative 3, 0. Let's find our y-intercept. To find your y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x and solve. Again, to find the intercept, you always plug 0 into the other variable and solve. So I got negative 5 times 0 plus 3y equals 15. Negative 5 times 0 drops away. We've got 3y is equal to 15. Divide both sides by 3. And we get y is equal to 5. If I write it in point form, this would be 0, 5. Now graphing, uh, graphing these, negative 3, 0. There, and 0, 5. Be right there. Now, since I know it's a line, and it's a line because everything's the first power, then we can just draw a line through those points. And that's our answer. Now, um, in order to um, plug this in your calculator, let me show it that way. We've got negative 5x plus 3y equals 15. Um, let me go ahead and solve for y, actually. Let me get... Arm's killing me. Let me take some, uh, yeah, ibuprofen here. <laughs> Middle of a pharmaceutical run while I'm doing this video, but, uh, I don't know if I can... There. Of course, now it's 45 minutes till it kicks in, but... Okay. Now, in order to plug in your calculator, you have to solve for y. So I'll take the negative 5x to the right side. So I've got 3y is equal to 5x plus 15. Now I'll divide everything by 3. Like that. Those 3's cancel. And we got y is equal to 5 thirds x plus 5. Now, if you can solve it for y, you can um, you can put in your calculator. Now, everything's the first power, so it's a linear equation again. Actually, I think linear equation is probably all you ever dealt with without an elementary algebra. Anyway, I'll press y equals, press cl clear. That was weird, that popped up. And then we want to put in 5 thirds x, so 5 divided by 3, x, plus 5, and graph. And gives us the same graph. Now, we got a third problem, which is also the same same idea. We got one-third x 
plus one half y is equal to two. Now, when we're plotting points, we found three points. But when we're finding intercepts, usually two is good enough. The reason why is because when you plug zero in for one of the variables, usually your your equation becomes so easy to work. Okay, let's find our x-intercept first. We'll plug zero in for y. So I got one third x plus one half times zero equals two. So we got one third x is equal to two. Multiply both sides by three. This is just a linear equation. And those threes cancel. And we got x is equal to six. And if I write it in point form, that would be six zero. Now for our y-intercept, we'll plug zero into the other variables. So we'll plug zero in for x. So I got one third times zero plus one half y is equal to two. One third times zero drops away, and we got one half y is equal to two. Now I'll multiply both sides um, by the LCM of all denominators, which is two. That's how we get rid of a fraction. You always multiply by the LCM of the denominator. Twos cancel, and you get y is equal to two times two, which is four. So this answer would be zero four. Okay, so to graph this, we have six zero, uh, six, six zero, and zero four. Right there, and draw a line through them. Because everything's the first power, it's a linear equation, it's a line. Now let's take a look at how to plug this into the calculator. In order to plug anything in your calculator, you have to be able to have it as y equals. So we need to solve for y. And this is the steps for solving a formula for a variable, solving for y. Um, first step, get rid of parentheses, don't have any. Second step, Get rid of fractions. Multiply everything by the LCM of all your denominators. Well, I got 3 and 2, so I'm going to multiply everything by 6. Now, 3 and 6 both divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 2 and 6 both divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we've got 2 times 1, 2x, plus 3 times 1 is 3y, and 12 t 6 times 2 is 12. Now get everything with a variable we're solving for on one side, everything else on the other side. So I'll take 2x over, and we get 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 12. Well, I'll divide uh, everything by the number in front of your y, which is a 3. And the threes cancel here. It gives us y is equal to negative two thirds x, and twelve divided by three is four. Now we're ready to plug this into our calculator. So I'll press y equals. Press clear. We got a negative. Now if your little dash is at the very beginning of your problem, it's a negative. So it's negative two. Divide by 3, x plus 4. And then graph. And that gives us our same graph we got up there. Now, one thing I want to point out is that we like syntax errors. When we screw up and we get a syntax error, those are, not, those are fine. Normally, you might say we don't like errors, but let's say I put a wrong dash here at the beginning. Instead of a negative, I put a minus. If I press graph, see how we get an error syntax? Now, the reason why I say we like the syntax error is you can do the go to. We'll down arrow to go to and press enter. It'll take you right to where the problem is. So it puts the flashing cursor on the first little dash. Then you think, oh, okay, must have been the other, other one. It's a negative. Um, and that still sounds kind of crazy. It's like, why do you like syntax errors? Well, sometimes if you put the wrong little little dash, you put a negative instead of a minus or vice versa, it'll just give you the wrong graph. Now, that's the frustrating part. 
You plugged in what you think is perfect. Calculator did all the work. Gives you the wrong answer. Um, so we'll talk more about this as we go on. When to use which, which little dash. The basic guideline on linear equations or linear graphs is that if the dash is at the very beginning of the problem, it's a negative. If it's between, like this has been a uh, two-thirds x minus four, if it's between two items, then that's a minus. Now we got our oddball cases for lines. And that's where we got x is equal to a number. And I'll, I'll actually put a number in there, like x equals 2. When you got x is equal to a number, it's going to be a vertical line at that number. So it's a vertical line at 2. If you got y is equal to a number, well that's going to be a horizontal line at that number. So that'll be a horizontal line at negative 3. Um, the difference between the, these uh, two here and the ones we have been looking at is the other ones have two variables. They have both x and y. Well, these just have a single variable. So let's take a look at, uh, look at these. x is equal to 3. Well, we said x equals is a vertical line. So we're going to go put a vertical line at 3. And that's our answer. That's the easy one. Now, there is no good way to do this on the calculator. You can put a vertical line, but it's more work to do it on the calculator than it is just do it by hand. You have to actually go into the draw menu, choose a vertical function. Well, if you have to choose a vertical function, you know it's going to be a vertical line, so it's just like you might as well have just drawn it. Now, the next one here, we got 4y plus 5 equals negative 11. Now, there's just one variable in here, just y. So we need to solve for y so we can see where our horizontal line is going to be at. So I'll take the 5 and move it over. Anytime you take anything across your equals, the sign changes. So the 5 becomes a negative 5, which gives us negative 11, negative 5 is negative 16. And then we'll divide both sides by the number in front of our y, which is 4. And we get y is equal to negative 4. So that's going to be a horizontal line at negative 4. So that'd be your answer right there. Now that one you can actually plug in your calculator. Um, it's kind of trivial, but uh, if I come over here, if I press y equals clear, and we'll put in negative four. So do negative four, and then graph. You can see it'll put a horizontal line at negative four, and that's your answer. Let's turn your page here. Now we have something called slope. This is how much uh, our line is, uh, you know, is it tilted this much, is it tilted up more, uh, so forth. Now the slope is represented by m, little m, and it's the change in y over the change in x. Now, given you have um, two points, x1, y1, x2, y2, your slope is going to be given by this formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, um, let's talk about our oddball cases. They come back again. We got x is equal to two. Remember, we said uh, x equal x equals a number is a vertical line or at that number, so it'd be a vertical line at two. 
and let's say y is equal to 1. When you got y is equal to a number, it's going to be a horizontal line at that number. So it's going to look like this. When you've got a vertical line, your slope is um, undefined. If you got a horizontal line, your slope is equal to 0. Now, a very easy way to tell if you got these oddball cases is for this one right here, if I'm given two points, maybe I'm given 2, 3, and 2, 5. If your x values are the same, see how these are both 2? Then your, your graph would be as x equals 2. So it makes it very easy. Here, if I have um, 5, 1, and 2, 1. Notice here my y parts are the same. And my y part is the um, uh, 1, um, so it's y equals 1. Here the x parts are the same, and there's 2, so it's x equals 2. If you don't if you don't spot that and you start plugging them in this formula and going through it, it's not a big deal. It'll be obvious once you um, once you work it. Now where those are headed is the slope intercept form of a line, which looks like this. We got y is equal to mx plus b. Now, if you got it solved for y, y is by itself, then m is our slope. We've already indicated that. And the number here at the end, which is b, is our y-intercept. We'll, we'll come back more to, to problems dealing with all this, but let's take a look at our first one. It says find the slope of the uh, line. Six. Now remember what slope is. Slope is the change in y over the change in x. Well, if I start um, at this blue point, start down here at negative one, negative three. I wanna, I wanna get to my other, other point, zero, zero. Well, change in y. I'm gonna go one, two, three places up. So I'm gonna go up three. And if I go up 3, I'll be sitting right here at the negative 1 on the x-axis. And then I need to go right 1. Change in y over change in x. So to go from this point, we went up 3 and right 1. Now let me show it over here with some color. Uh, negative 1, negative 3. And 0, 0. Okay, so I'm sitting right here. I want to go from this point get to the other one. So I'm going to go up 3, and then I'll go right 1, like that. Well, up 3, that means uh, positive 3. Right 1 means positive 1. 3 over 1 gives us 3, so our slope would be 3. Now up means it'll be a positive number. If you go down, that means it'll be negative. And these are your change in y. Now if we go right, that means we'll have a positive number. And if we go left, that means we'll have a negative number. And this is your change in x. Okay. Well, I could have done this problem a little bit differently. Green, maybe. Let's say I started at this point and wanted to get to the other one. Well, I would have went down 3. So down 3. And I would have went uh, left 1. Well, that seems like it would change the answer completely. 
down. What did we say down was? Negative. So that means I'm going to go negative 3. And left means negative. So negative 1. Well, negative divided by negative is positive, And 3, di 3 divided by 1 is 3. So it doesn't matter what point you start at. Um, it'll still give you the same slope. And that's true anywhere on this line. If I pick any point anywhere, and if I go to any other point, I'll always get slope of 3. Let's take a look at this problem. <coughs> Let me grab a drink here. I ate some nacho chips earlier, kind of salty. <coughs> okay. I'm going to do the steps a little bit different than what they're implying here. Got two, negative three, and negative four or five. They say plot each pair of points and graph the line containing them. Um, you can graph it if you want. Um, I'll probably do one. And then it says determine a slope. Well, I'm just going to use our formula. If you're given two points, this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. Our formula is y2 minus y1, this is from above, over x2 minus x1. You're probably better off before you plug in the numbers to replace the variables with parentheses. Y2 minus Y1, so parentheses minus parentheses, and X2 minus X1, so parentheses minus parentheses. Now Y2, we said, was 5. Y1 is negative 3. X2 is negative 4. And X1 is 2. Well, here we have a negative negative, which becomes positive, so we got 5 plus 3. And down below here, we got negative 4, negative 2, which gives us negative 6. Well, 5 plus 3 is 8. And that reduces top and bottom both of us by 2. That gives us negative 4 thirds. Okay, if I were to draw the line 2, negative 3, negative 4, 5. line that goes through them would look like, like this. Now if your line's going down from left to right, then the slope is negative. So that's kind of a, a check you can do to see if you messed up on your signs. Now if your graph is going up, like if I graphed it and this is what I got, then your, your M better be positive. Let me start a new page. <coughs> This one's one of our oddball ones. We got 5, 2. And we got 5, negative 1. You notice something about these? The x values are the same, aren't they? Well, that tells me that my graph is x is equal to 5. Which means it's a vertical line at 5. And remember what I said about slope when you got a vertical line. Slope is undefined. So if you spot that, you can very easily come up with the answer that way. If not, it'll be obvious. Uh, let's plug in our formula again. This is x1, y1, x2, y2. And our formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm going to go through and I'll put parentheses in first wherever I have a variable. y2 is negative 1, y1 is 2, x2 is 5, and x1 is 5. Well, up on top I got negative 1, negative 2, which gives us negative 3. And down below I got 5 minus 5, which gives us 0. You can't have division by 0. Whenever you have a 0 downstairs, then that's always undefined. Yeah, let's take a look at finding the slope for this one. I'm given 7 fifths, 1 third, 3 tenths, and 5 sixths. 
And uh, I'm not going to plot the points and all that. I'm just going to find the slope. So this is our x1, this is our y1, this is our x2, and this is our y2. Our formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Well, y2 we said was 5, 6. y1 is 1 third. x2 is 3 tenths. And x1 is 7 fifths. This is uh, called a complex fraction. A complex fraction means a fraction inside of a fraction. Now the easiest way to get rid of a complex fraction is to multiply everything by the LCM of all your inner denominators. Now when I say inner denominators, here's the inside fraction, so 6 would be an inner denominator. This 3 would be, this 10 would be, this 5 would be. Well the LCM of 6, 3, 10, and 5 would be 30 I believe, so we'll multiply everything by 30. We'll see more about complex fractions later on. Okay. Six and f six and thirty both divided by six. Six divided by six is one. Thirty divided by six is five. Three and thirty both divided by three. Three divided by three is one. Thirty divided by three is ten. 10 and 30 both divided by 10. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 30 divided by 10 is 3. And 5 and 30 both divided by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 30 divided by 5 is 6. So we've got 5 times 5, which is 25, minus 10 times 1, which is 10. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 6 times 7, which is 42. Now 25 minus 10 gives us 15. 9 minus 42 is negative 33. And then top and bottom both of us by at least 3. I'll put the negative up on top. So that gives us negative 5 over 11. Assuming I didn't make a basic math error somewhere. Double checking myself here. Okay, that looks correct. Let's look at our next problem. It says m is equal to 3, and it passes through point negative 2, 1. It says, graph the line containing the given point and having slope m. Do not find the equation of the line. Okay. Now, 3. Uh, if I write that in fraction form, which we always want to do if we're graphing, um, this would be change in y over change in x. So, a change in y, and this would be the change in x. Now if you erase though, or start a new, new tablet so we don't have that here, but when it's a positive 3, that means we're going to go up 3. When it's a positive 1 downstairs, that means we're going to go right 1. So what they're wanting us to do is graph the line containing a given point and have it slope m. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to plot that point. That's negative 2, 1, which will be right there. Now we need to get our second point, so from that one, we're going to go up 3 and right 1. So again, from this first point, we're going to go up 3 and right 1, and that's where we'll put our second point. Draw a line through the two points, and that's our answer. So again, to recap that, I, I plotted this point, negative 2, 1, and then I used my slope, uh, up 3, right 1, so go from that point, I went up 3 and right 1, that gave me my second point. And then I just drew a line through them. Now these are just trying to give you more practice on, on slope and graphing and so forth. Trying to get you comfortable with what slope represents. Now yeah, let's take a look at this one. We got m is equal to 2 thirds, and we got uh, negative 1 
and negative 3. Same instructions. Um, graph the line containing a given point and having slope m. Do not find the equation in the line. Well, this is uh, already in fraction form, so that's good. This is a change in y over the change in x. So that means we're going to go up 2, and this is a positive 3, so we're going to go right 3. So let's go to negative 1, negative 3, which is right here. We'll pop, plot a point. Now from there, we're going to go up 2 and right 3. So up 2, right 3, and that's where we put our second point. Once you get that, then you just draw a line through them, and that's your answer. <coughs> now this next one's asking us to find the equation of the line, so let's uh, let's see how to do that. Got m is equal to two, and it passes through the point three negative two. It says find the equation line with a given slope and contain the given point. Express your answer in slope intercept form if possible. So finding the equation of the line. Step one. Find m. Well, this, these first ones would be pretty easy. They'll just give us m. So they tell us m is two. Well, step two, um, plug the given point in for x and y and m from step one into y equals mx plus b and solve for b. Okay. When they give us a point, they're basically telling us this is a, a specific example uh, where this is x and this is y. So we're going to plug negative 2 in for the y. m we said was 2. x is 3 then plus b. And then we want to solve for b. So I got negative 2 is equal to 2 times 3 is 6 plus b. Take the 6 over the left side becomes a negative 6 and we get b is equal to negative 8. Now step 3 is to write our answer. Slope intercept form looks like this. y is equal to mx plus b and two things you got to find are m and b. Well, we found m in step one, and we found b in step two. So now we'll plug those in. So we got m, which is 2, x, and then b, which is negative 8. So our answer is y is equal to 2x minus 8. Now, I always go with slope-intercept form to solve these problems. Uh, you can use point-slope form. If you learned it that way, that's fine. If it works for you, you can keep on using it. Uh, I used to teach both. Um, and then one semester I had uh, two students from Japan and uh, one she sat in the back row and slept every class three-hour class and she'd wake up for the test and she'd get her hundred on it and go back to sleep uh, the guy he uh, paid attention every class he got hundreds on every test too I asked him one night why he, why he paid attention <laughs> and he said uh, his part of the culture in Japan was such that he couldn't come to class and not pay attention um, she must have been from a different part of Japan. She had to come to class. She never missed any class, but she slept every class. Um, both of them had taken up through calculus in uh, high school, Calc 2, Calc 3 or something. So algebra was so easy to them. And, um, but they came over here to get a degree. And at that point in time, there was no testing out, so they had to take a math class. And I think they were both business, business majors, so they just took college algebra. They could have been teaching the class. Well, he asked me one night why I was showing both forms. Why did I show the slope-intercept form and the point-slope form? And I showed him, or I, or I told him, that you needed both depending upon what the problem looked like. 
and he proceeded to prove to me he could do everything with a slope intercept form and where he learned um, algebra they never even showed the point slope form um, if you got one formula to work 100% of the time why why use two I like that so I, I adopted it long story to explain why you'll never see me use a point slope form and let's take a look at another one got m is equal to negative two fifths and we got two negative three same instructions step one find m well m's given that's easy step two plug in the given point for x and y and this is x and this is y so we got negative three for the y m from step one we said was negative two fifths and x is two plus b then we want to solve for b well negative two times two gives me a negative four fifths plus b take the negative four fifths to the left side and it becomes a positive four fifths equals b. Now this is a mixed number. We can take the negative 3 times the 5 gives us negative 15 plus the 4 gives us a negative 11 and then our denominator stays the same. So b is equal to negative 11 fifths. So again what I did took the negative 3 multiplied it times the denominator. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15 then add it to the numerator. Negative 15 plus 4 gives us negative 11. And step 3 write our answer down. Well, we said m was negative two fifths, so we got y is equal to negative two fifths x, and b is negative eleven fifths. So that's our answer. Fourteen. We got m is equal to zero. Four negative one. Want to find equation in line? Same instructions. Now, m equals zero tells us something very specific. If you got m is undefined or m is equal to zero, well, remember m is equal to zero is a horizontal line, which is of the form y equals. And since our y part here is negative one, our answer is going to be y is equal to negative one. Now, you could actually solve this problem and get that. You know, if I went through my steps, first step, find m. Well, m is equal to zero. Step two plug in your given point for x and y so we said y is negative 1 m we said was 0 from step 1 so plug that in and x is 4 plus b 0 times 4 is 0 so we get b is equal to negative 1 and step 3 um, write down your answer m we said was 0 so we got y is equal to 0 x and b is negative 1 well, 0 times x drops away, and our answer is y is equal to negative 1. Again, if you'd spotted it was one of the oddball cases, it would have saved you some, some steps. Now, the one that's not so easy is where they say m is undefined. And I'll say it passes through 3, 2. This one you cannot use these three steps on. Um, if you think m is undefined, well, that was our... Um, vertical line. Vertical line is x equals a number. Well, our x part of our point is uh, 3, so our answer is x is equal to 3. Um, let's look at the next problem. Actually, let me grab a drink here. Okay, so we're given points 1, 2, and 2, 5. Instructions say find equation line containing the given points. Express your answer in slope intercept form if possible. Well, um, first step is to find m. And remember, we got a formula for two points uh, to find a slope. That's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
So I'm going to label these. This is x1, this is y1, this is x2, this is y2. And I'll plug in my numbers. y2 is said was 5, y1 is 2, x2 is 2, and x1 is 1. So 5 minus 2 is 3, 2 minus 1 is 1. So we get m is equal to 3. Now our second second step says plug in the given point for x and y and the m from step one. Well, we got two points. You pick either point, whichever one looks easier to you. I'll pick the first one. So plug this in for x, plug this in for y. So we've got two there. m we said was three from step one, and x is one. Go on with this first point, plus b. Well, three times one is three. Take 3 over, becomes a negative 3, and we get b is equal to negative 1. Step 3, write our answer down. Well, in step 1 we said m is 3, and b in step 2 was negative 1. So our answer is y is equal to 3x minus 1. And I need to start a new page. And let's look at another example of that. We've got negative 4, 1, and 1, negative 2. Same instructions, find the equation in the line, and um, express your answer in slope-intercept form, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, step 1, find m. Never changes. Um, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, how you find m is changes. Uh, we'll see that in uh, parallel and perpendicular. We'll also see, see if you go on and take calculus, uh, finding m is entirely different. You have to use calculus to do it. Okay, so uh, this will be x1, this will be y1, this is x2, and this is y2. So I'll plug in my values. Y2 is negative 2. Y1 is 1. X2 is 1. And X1 is negative 4. Now well, negative 2, negative 1 gives us negative 3. And a negative negative here becomes positive. So this becomes 1 plus 4. Which gives us negative 3 fifths. Okay, step two, plug in the given point for x and y and the m from step one. Uh, I'm going to pick, which one? Uh, second point, I guess. I'll plug this in for x and this in for y. So we've got negative two is equal to negative three-fifths times one plus b. Now, as weird as it sounds, you can plug in either point and they'll give you the same answer. Negative 3 fifths times 1 gives us negative 3 fifths plus b. Solving for b, so I take negative 3 fifths to the left side and it becomes a positive 3 fifths equals b. Now this is a mixed number. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. So we get b is equal to negative 7 fifths. Step 3, write down your answer. Well, from step one, we said m was negative three fifths, so we got y is equal to negative three fifths x, and b was negative seven fifths from step two. So that's our answer. Y is equal to negative three fifths x minus seven fifths. <coughs> now we're going to see uh, a little bit different use of the uh, slope-intercept form. Now this is a line again. Everything's the first power. Uh, that's important to recognize. Uh, so we've got y is equal to 5x minus 1. It says find the slope and y-intercept of each line. Now if it's in slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form is when you got y equals. Then the numbers before your x will always be your slope. So your slope 
is equal to 5. The number at the end is your y-intercept. So our y-intercept is negative 1. If you want to write that in point form, that would be 0, negative 1. Slope, 5. That'd be like 5 over 1. Remember this is a change in y over a change in x? That would mean up 5 and write 1. Slope intercept form is so nice to graph these. That's why I hate plotting points, is because if you're going to do it by hand, use a slope intercept form. Um, if you're going to use a calculator, then just plug in your calculator. What we do with uh, do graphing this by hand is we first plot our y intercept. Y intercept is negative 1. So I'm going to go down to negative 1 on my y axis and put a dot. Now, from that point, uh, we're going to use our slope to get our second point. So from the y-intercept, I'm going to go up 5, right 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up 5, right 1. And that's where we put our second point. So we got our two points. Draw a line through them. And that's our answer. Now, to plug this in a calculator. Um, it's already solved for y, so it's perfect for the calculator. That's why slope-intercept form is perfect for everything. If you're doing it by hand, it's so easy to graph it this way versus plotting points. And if you're using calculator, it's also so easy. So we'll request y equals clear. We're going to put in 5x minus 1. And then I'll do graph. And we get the same graph as what we did there. Uh, let's look at the next one. Actually, let me start a new page. Okay, we've got 8x plus 4y equals 16. And it says find a slope and y-intercept of each line. Graph the line. Well, again, we want it in slope-intercept form, so we have to solve for y. Um, I'm going to take the 8x over to the right side. So we've got 4y is equal to negative 8x plus 16. I'm skipping a few steps here. Um, you know, our first step said get rid of parentheses, don't have any, get rid of fractions. That's our second step, we don't have any. Third step is get everything with a variable we're solving for on one side, everything else on the other side. So I took the 8x over. Um, then our very last step says divide everything by the number in front of your y, which is 4. Now here, these 4 is going to cancel. And we've got y is equal to negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So we've got negative 2x plus 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now this is our slope-intercept form. The number of this before your x is your slope, so it's negative 2. The number at the end is your y-intercept. So I've got a y-intercept of 4. If you want to write it in point form, it would be 0, 4. Now slope. Uh, if I put that in fraction form, that would be negative 2 over 1. This is a change in y, this is a change in x. So it's a negative 2. That means we're going to go down 2. This is a positive 1, which means we'll go right 1. Okay. Our y-intercept is 0, 4. So I'll go put the point there. Then, using our slope, we're going to get our second point. This says we go down 2, right 1. So from our y-intercept, we'll go down 2 and right 1. And that's our second point. Now I draw a line through them. And that's our answer. Now if I was doing this in a calculator, the moment where you have y by itself, this right here, is perfect for the calculator. So I come over here. I'll press y equals, press clear. Got negative 2x plus 4. And then graph. And that gives us our same graph. Probably a little bit better than the one we did. Okay, let's look at our last problem. It's one of our oddball cases. We got y is equal to negative 3. 
It says find a slope and y-intercept of each line and graph it. Well, let's first graph it. y equals a number is a horizontal line at that number. So we're going to go down negative 3, and we'll draw it. So there's our graph. Now, um, our slope, if you've got a horizontal line, your slope is always 0. It also asks us for our y-intercept. Well, it's pretty obvious. Look at it. It crosses at 3. So our y-intercept is 3 or 0. Actually, negative 3. Try it again. So our y-intercept is 0, negative 3. Now, let's say you had the other oddball case, like uh, x is equal to 2. We looked at that one earlier. Well, x equals, remember these are oddball because they got a single variable. x equals a number is a vertical line at that number. Well, um, for a slope, m would be undefined. Now, y-intercept. y-intercept is where it touches or crosses the y-axis. This does not touch or cross anywhere, does it? So for a y-intercept, there would be none. So m is undefined, y-intercept is none. On the oddball cases, it's probably easiest to just look at your graph, and, and you can probably see it then. You can only use the slope-intercept form if you got both x's and y's, and everything's the first power, a linear. And that's actually all that section. So let's save that.